Number 49, letter A. Find the electric field at the location of Q sub A in figure 18.54, given that Q sub B is 10 microcoulombs and Q sub C is negative 5 microcoulombs. All right. So uh, I'm going to run through this problem. Check out number 47 for a detailed analysis of how to talk about electric fields and everything and so on and so forth. All right. Um, this one I'm just going to run through. So uh, we have to find the electric field at Q sub A. So let me put a little dot there. That means I got to know the electric fields produced by both Q sub C and Q sub B at this particular point. So first thing I do is I start with the charge. So Q sub B is going to be positive as it told us and Q sub C is going to be negative. Now what I do and let me plug that, let me put that in as maybe a blue. All right. So now what I do is I think about, well, how do the electric field lines point? Pretend Q sub A isn't even here. It has nothing to do with the problem. The electric field is zero. Why is it the case? I explained in number 47. So here, uh, what we have to do now is consider the electric field lines produced by the positive charge. Remember, electric field lines always point away. So therefore, at this particular location, I'm going to have a vector that's pointing in that direction. Okay, great. How about now for Q sub C? Well, Q sub C is negative and electric field lines always point toward the negative charge, right? So therefore, from this particular point, we're going to have a vector pointing towards Q sub C. Okay, those are the electric field lines produced at this particular point. Guess what our job is now? Our job is now to find the resultant electric field. So let me draw my coordinates, all right? What I also now need to know is I need to know these angles in here, right? I need to know these particular angles. So how do we, how do we know those angles? Well, they also told us down here at the bottom that the equilateral tri it's an equilateral triangle and it's 25 centimeters on the side. So if this is an equilateral triangle that I'm drawing in here, well, it's a terrible equilateral triangle, but if this is an equilateral triangle in here, right, don't we know this angle in here? So we know all the angles inside of an equilateral triangle are 60 because they all have to add up. They're all equal, by the way, and they all add up to 180. So just to take 180 and divide it by 3. But now this whole angle is going to be 60, and I just need to find this little piece, so that's 30. Okay? So we know that that angle is 30 there. So now what we can do is, and we also know, by the way, that this angle in here is going to be 30 as well. Okay? So now I have all those pieces. So let me just get rid of this equilateral triangle. And let me just plug in those degrees. So this is 30. And this is also 30 in here. So now what I need to do is basically find the components. Okay? So we can, choose, we can use our component table here. So let's do the x component. And then the y component. We'll plug in our vectors on the left. Let's start with then, let's call this E sub B, okay, because that's the electric field produced by uh, B at this point, All right? And we now, we can find the magnitude of it, right? Can't we find the magnitude? So we can find the magnitude of E sub B. How do we do that? Well, remember, electric field is simply equal to KQ over R squared. So the electric field here for B is going to be equal to the electrostatic uh, a constant, right, of 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by Q sub B, right, the charge of B, what is it? They told us it was 10 microcoulombs, so 10 times 10 to the minus 6th, all then divided by the distance between those two squared. So what's this particular distance? Well, it told us it's an equilateral triangle, 25 centimeters. So the distance is 0.25 meters, right, and just square that. So let's plug that on into the calculator. So we're going to get 8.99 times 10 to the 9th times 10 times 10 to the minus 6th divided by 0.25 squared. And we get a value here of approximately now. This is going to be 1, 4. So eh, let me do scientific. So 1.44-ish 1. 1. times 10 to the 3, 6. All right. So that's the electric field. But that's the that's not the components of it, right? This is going to be the overall, this is the magnitude of this vector. But now how do I find the components? Meaning, how do I find this x? Take a look at the picture, guys. How do I find this x component and this y component? Well, you got to know that angle, right? So this x component up here is going to be a function of the sine because it's the opposite side. right? The y component here is going to be a function of the cosine because it's the adjacent side. So basically take this to find the uh, x value. Take this and multiply it by the sine of 30. That'll be the x. So why don't we plug that in? So let's take that exact value multiplied by sine of 30. And we have a value now of about, and I'm going to plug that into the table. And by the way, it's negative, right? So you always got to remember in your component table, you got to take the sine into account, the component sine, and the component magnitude. All right? 
was going to be negative 7 point, and that's the answer to that, you know, math down there, negative 7.19 times 10 to the 3, 4, 5, times 10 to the 5th. Okay, what's the y component? Just instead of the sine of 30, it's going to be the cosine of 30. So take that magnitude, multiply it by, meaning the 1.44 times 10 to the 6, multiply it by then cosine of 30. And we get now a bigger number, right? So this is about, and it's positive because it's pointing up in the picture. So there's going to be 1.2, 1.25-ish times 10 to the uh, 6. All right, great. So that's E sub B. So now why don't we do the same thing for E sub C? All right. So same idea here. We have the magnitude, so I'm literally, the, the calculation, the way I'm going to approach is the same, except instead of the charge here being 10 microcoulombs, it's now negative 5. Now here's a, th don't remember, it's really absolute value, okay? So don't take the sign uh, into account, all right? Just plug in the magnitude. So this is going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 6th. And just go about the business the exact same way. So 8.99 times 10 to the 9th, multiply by 5 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided by 0.25 squared. Simply take that and then multiply it by the, uh, well, now here, <laughs> I was going to say sine of 30. That's always why you want a picture. All right, so here, take a look at the picture. So the magnitude, by the way, of this particular vector right here is going to be uh, 7.19 times 10 to the uh, fifth. Okay, it so happens to work out basically to the exact same x component, more or less. All right, interestingly enough, if we did the algebra, we notice some simplifications. So here... I know the sign, I know the value of that angle. Not the value of that angle is 30 degrees. But take a look at the picture. Here's the x component, right? And here's then the y component, right? So how do I find the x component? Again, it's going to be a sine of 30. I know you guys might be used to doing like cosine values, right? To find x cosine, but that's only memorized because those angles are generally in reference to the x-axis. These angles are in reference to the y-axis, so it's going to flip, right? That's why it's important to take a look at the picture. So let's take that value of 7.19 that we found for the magnitude of that E sub C vector. And then multiply that now by the sine of 30. And that will give us the x component. Remember, it's pointing in the negative direction. So it's going to be negative 3.5, well, 3.60, I guess. 3.60 times 10 to the, what do we got there, fifth? Okay, and the y component's also negative. So take that exact answer then and multiply it now by the cosine of 30. So we get six point, negative 6.23-ish times 10 to the 5. And now, lo and behold, all we have to do is add these two babies together. All right. So the resultant electric field here, I'm going to write it like this. I'll write it as the electric field, the resultant. Okay is going to now equal, just sum up the x and the y's separately. All right, so let's take that value. Let's take, hold on one second, negative. I'm going to do the exact values here. Negative that value, then minus that value from it. So basically adding the x components more or less, right? And we're keeping the negative sign. So it's 1.08 times 10 to the, looks like sixth, right? Good. And then the y components now, and that should make sense in the picture. Look, the, both of these vectors are pointing in the negative x direction. So we should have added them up. That's good. But notice that now the y's are opposite, and they should be. And if you notice the signs in the component table, they are opposite. So let's take the uh, 1.25 times 10 to the 6th. So I'm using the exact values, though, remember. Right? Minus than that 6.23-ish. So this is exactly going to be half of it. So that's great. 6.23 times 10 to the fifth, right? Three, four, five, good. And if we did the algebra, we noticed some simplifications, but instead I chose to use the component table here. I figure, I, I think it makes uh, somewhat more sense for uh, most students. Um, okay, so now we know the components of the resultant vector. That means if I were to redraw, right, the, the axes here, the red, the red coordinate system, okay? And I plotted, you know, these, X and Y components, negative X. So that means we're going out in this direction. That's going to be this value, right? And then I have a Y component, but it's positive. So I got to go up now. Okay, and it probably, and it's a little smaller, right? So in terms of getting a little better, a more 
detailed of a picture. This is times 10 to the 6th. This is times uh, 10 to the 5th. Okay. And let's just draw that in. Sorry. So this right here is going to be the electric field of the resultant vector, right? And we know the components. So how do we find the hypotenuse, basically, of that triangle? We can use that formula, right? You've seen this before. This is the square root of the sum of all the x's squared plus the sum of all the y's squared. Okay? So the sum of all the x's was negative negative 1.08 times 10 to the 6th, you know, square that, plus then 6.23 times 10 to the 5th and square that, times 10 to the 5th and square that, okay? And what do we get? So we get now square root of this thing. One second, I got to make sure that I'm plugging in all the exact values. I also have to make sure that I don't lose my uh, signs along the way, plus then that thing squared. Okay, great. So here we now have, okay. So it's gonna be 1.2, interesting. So 1.25-ish times 10 to the six. And that is going to be in terms of Newton's per Coulomb. Okay, great. So that is this value. And then we'd have to find the direction, right? I mean, we should. So it doesn't really ask specifically, but why not, right? Why not? So here's the, well, how do we calculate that angle? Well, if you know the Y component, you know the X component, you can always use the tangent, right? So the tangent, tangent of that angle is going to be the uh, y value 6.23 times 10 to the fifth all over the x value of 1.08. I'm doing the absolute values here times 10 to the sixth. Do the inverse tan of that. So second tan, inverse tan of those things. So let's do now that values first. Okay, great. Then divide it now by that value. Let's see what we get. So you get 30. Cool, 30 degrees. It's exactly what it works out to be. So the theta value then in here is going to be 30 degrees. So I can state now, so theta here is going to be 30 degrees. So now in terms of my answer, my final answer for letter A, it's going to be the electric field, right? The result in electric field at that point is going to be equal to 1.25 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb at 30 degrees. Uh, we'll call it north of west. And that's it. That takes care of letter A. That was just letter A, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's do letter B. All right. So let's erase everything. And let's do it again. All right. This time for forces. Now, again, check out, check out, uh, check out number 40. What was it? Eight, maybe? I don't even remember anymore. Um, check out number 48. I went through a detailed problem with forces. I'm going to kind of run through it. If you thought... <laughs> If you thought this problem was running through it, imagine what the other, how the other problems are, right? Rather probably stab yourself in the eye with a pencil than watch these videos sometimes, right? Sometimes they are extremely detailed, but, um, you know, they, they kind of have to be in order for things to kind of make sense. All right, so now we got to find the forces on Q sub A, right? So we're, we... Uh, let's run through this. So Q sub A is going to be a positive value. We always got to work with the signs first. Q sub B is again still positive and Q sub C is still negative. So let's look at each of the forces independently. They're going to be repulsive. So that force is pointing in that direction. Okay, so this will call it F sub B right on A. And then this here and this here will be attracted. And I'll use the same colors. Right, so that's going to now be the force of C. Now notice the picture basically works out in the same way, okay? So um, we know the angles, all right? We, we've already found them. So F sub B, let's plug this in, and this is F sub C. The only difference here now is that we're not talking about electric field, we're talking about forces. So you need to know the charge of both things that you're talking about when you're calculating the force, right? And we look at each force independently. So let's say this is the force of B, right? On essentially A. 
is going to be equal to the k constant 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by the charges of both multiplied together. All right, so this is essentially going to be then q sub b was 10 times 10 to the minus 6th. And that's going to be multiplied then by 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9th because it's nanocoulombs now. All then divided by the distance between them, right, squared. We already know this is 0.25, that's the distance in square. So F sub B, and this will be the magnitude, all right? 8.99 times 10 to the ninth, multiplied by 10 times 10 to the minus six, times 1.5 times 10 to the minus ninth, all divided by 0.25 squared. And we get a value here of about 2.16 times 10 to the negative three. But remember, that's the, uh, that's the magnitude of F sub B. We've got to find the components, okay? So we can add them all together. So remember, take this and multiply it by the sine of 30 to find the X component. If that's unfamiliar, rewind the video, take a look back at the part A, all right? I know it's electric field, but the angles are all the same. So take that and multiply it by sine of 30. So this we're going to get a value here is going to be 1.08 times 10 to the uh, negative 3. Now remember, this should be this has a negative x component to it. All right. Again, take a look at the picture from the electric field. All right, to see why, and then take that answer and multiply by cosine of thirty to find the y. So this is going to be then it's positive since it's pointing up. So there's going to be one point eight seven, I guess, times ten to the negative three. Okay, great. So now I got to find. So I take took care of that vector. Now i got to do it for q sub c, so the only thing that's going to change my formula is instead of this number, I'm going to plug in now 5 times 10 to the minus 6th. Okay, so let's calculate that. So 8.99 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by 5 times 10 to the minus 6th times 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9th, all divided by 0.25 squared. Great, we got a magnitude then of 0 0.00107, right? So basically, uh, exactly the same as this x component, that's because it's we got half the charge there, essentially. Um, so what I want to do now is going to be to take that magnitude and then multiply it by sine of 30 to find the x component. Okay, so this is going to be, and the x component is again negative. This thing is pointing in the negative x direction. Okay, again, I know I keep restating this, but if it's, you know, if this, I know I'm running through this, but take a look, two things, take a look at the, I think it was number 49, excuse me, 48. In terms of the problems here, I went through forces in much, much detail. And also take a look at part A in this problem because I've looked at all the directions and stuff. So this is negative 5.39 times 10 to the minus fourth. All right, great. And then take that same value, multiply it by cosine of 30 to find the y. 9.34, and that's negative 9.34 times 10 to the minus fourth. Add these two up now. Right, so let's take the negative 108. Okay, so negative. Great, and then uh, subtract from that now the five. So we get a total here. So the uh, resultant force here, the components will be negative 1.62 times 10 to the minus three. And now, same thing for the y's, add them all together. So let's scroll back, I gotta find that number. So here that is, and then minus now the nine, that guy. So here this is going to be a positive value. So this is gonna be 9.34 times 10 to the minus fourth. Same pattern as we saw with the electric field. So things are sounding pretty good. And now since we know the components of the resultant, we can just use that resultant formula to find the answer, right? So the resultant force here will be equal to the square root of negative 1.62 times 10 to the minus three squared plus then 9.34 times 10 to the minus fourth squared. And all we now need to do, plug it on in. So let's do parentheses, great. So we got this, close the parentheses squared. Add to that then, that value squared. So here we get a value of about 1.87 times 10 to the minus third newtons. That's the resultant force, okay? And then to find the direction if we needed it, right? You'd wanna draw your coordinate system here, 
right? You can actually, I'm just going to draw it separately. I'll draw it on up here. Here's your coordinate system. We have a coordinate that has a negative x value. Doo, 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 doo. And then we have a y component, which is smaller. Doo, 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 doo. And then draw in your resultant, right? That's the magnitude we just found, the 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3. And then just simply find the direction by doing the inverse tan. So the inverse tan of the y value, 9 point that, divided by then the x value, right? Oh my goodness, it's 30 again, right? Is that coincidental? I think not. So, final answer here for now letter B. And this was all, should have gotten rid of that A, this was all for letter B. It's going to be that the resultant force here is going to be equal to 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3 newtons at, uh, again, 30 degrees north of west. Voila. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Hopefully this video helped. If it did, give us a hand by hitting that subscribe button and hit the like button. All right, as they say, what is it? Destroy, mutilate, annihilate the like button. I don't know. Just beat the, beat the bejesus out of it. Whatever you got to do. All right. <laughs> okay. The book's almost done. Yay. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.